We have no idea who else is here except for us. There you go. And now everyone is here because we are live. Hello <laughs> and welcome to Mashable's Google, Mashable's Google Plus Hangout where this is um, a Yahoo-themed and Marisha, Marissa Mayer-themed uh, Hangout today. Um, this week marks one year since Marissa Mayer took over as CEO of Yahoo. Um, so we are going to be talking about where Yahoo was a year ago to where they are now, talk about some of the pros and cons, and where the company goes from here. Um, so along with me, I'm Ryan Lytle, community producer here at Mashable. Um, we have Seth Fiegerman, a uh, business reporter here, Lauren Invik, who is our associate business editor, and Christina Warren, senior tech analyst. How are you guys doing? Good, thank you. Excellent, sweet. Okay, so we want to talk about where Yahoo was a year ago um, when they made this announcement. Uh, Seth, you had written a piece yesterday basically saying don't call it a comeback, but you also really <laughs> talked about some of the things that have um, kind of changed over the past year. So tell us a little bit about what happened, what's been going on the past year, where Yahoo was and where they are now. Sure. I mean, it's important to remember that a year ago this time, Yahoo was kind of in a state of chaos. I mean, they've had four CEOs, two permanent ones, two interim ones, um, prior to the mayor taking over. Um, other execs have been leaving. Um, it's the last, I mean, you know, one of their CEOs was found to have plagiarized, or not plagiarized, to have lied on his resume. <laughs> um, you know, it was not a good situation. They were struggling to find new sources of revenue. Um, and so when she came in, I think it really was seen as a, a fresh start. Um, and where I wrote my piece is if you look at kind of the language that was being used at that time to describe her, it was, it was pretty extreme. I mean, people were making hope posters of her, parodying, uh, you know, the Shepard Ferry Obama picture. Um, they were calling her a new hope. They were calling her savior. Um, and it's not hard to see why, given what was going on. Lauren? Yeah, well, I mean, Yahoo employees have been promised for so long that, she, I mean, four CEOs in one year, and they've been promised change and innovation every single time. Uh, Carol Barth did not deliver innovation and change. Uh, and, you know, Scott Thompson was only had, what, three or four months before he was sort of forced out? Barely. Um, so he did not have time to, to do anything. So I think when you brought in someone with a really strong background at Google, I mean, product background, um, but also someone who was the face of the company and really communicated Google's vision. I think that was exciting for people. And, you know, she's, she's really changed Yahoo from a place where no one would really want to work and wasn't uh, very desirable in, in sort of California, Silicon Valley area, somewhere that is a place that people want to work. They have much better talent now. They're shipping products much faster. Yeah, we're going to talk about some of those pros, but Christina, I do want to uh, get to you. You know, you obviously have a, a great hand on the tech community. So, you know, when um, Marissa Mayer was announced, what was kind of the, the feedback that you were seeing from uh, the tech community? Well, I mean, I think that the initial kind of reaction was was one of just almost shock. Like, wow, <laughs> it, she, she's really, she's going to, to Yahoo, really? Because... You know, uh, I don't think that any of us ever questioned whether or not she was good enough to be a CEO of a big company. It was just a question of, you know, Yahoo was such a sinking ship and it had so much baggage associated with it, whereas uh, Mayor has been known as being such a rising star and, and having such uh, enormous amounts of success that it seemed like, why, why would anybody want to do that? Uh, but then I think that, that the second uh, thought was, well, if anybody can do it, maybe she can, and maybe this could be a, a great way for Marissa to kind of forge her own path that's not associated with, with Larry and Sergey and, and some of the other early Googlers and really kind of make something her own. So that was that was the initial uh, kind of response was kind of, wait, wait a minute, what, what is she doing? And then, okay, well, if anybody can do anything, you know, at least they've got someone who's got a good head on her shoulders and someone who's got a good um, and a uh, opinionated sense of product and, and of design and, and philosophy in that respect. Great. Um, and we want to move on to uh, kind of the pros and cons of the past year for Marissa Mayer. And uh, today, Lauren, you had a, a great piece kind of talking about a lot of the, the positives that uh, she has brought to Yahoo. Um, and I know you, you really talked about how she has faced heavy criticism um, this week, kind of, you know, why haven't there been more changes or, or more um, innovation in the past year, perhaps. Um, so talk about some of the, the positives that you've seen in the past year. 
I mean, I, yeah, I think it's, it's sort of ridiculous if anyone was expecting that Yahoo, being as big and installed of a company as it was, um, you know, seven uh, consecutive quarters of declining ad growth, was going to have a turnaround in the course of one year. Um, Marissa's had a very clear vision that she's laid out from, you know, pretty much since October. She's like, first, we're going to focus on building a really good team, then we're going to build really good product, and then, we're, and then, you know, users will be more engaged with that product and we'll be able to make more ad revenue. Um, Again, she didn't set a timeline for that. She said it was going to take years. Um, so far, she's executed really well on the first part of that. I mean, she's made, she's improved Yahoo's culture. And you can poke fun at the free food and the free smartphones, but it changes um, an office environment. And these are perks that were being already offered by Google and Facebook. And, you know, obviously there's, there's going to be pure envy. And if you're going to compete with them for engineering talent, then you need to offer you know, a similar workplace environment that's, you know, equally appealing. Um, and so, you know, secondly, she has been, you know, criticized for maybe buying her way to relevance, buying talent. But when you don't have a really great talent base to begin with, um, acquiring it is certainly one way of getting started. Now, you know, I think of like she, you know, her first acquisition was stamped. Um, Robbie Stein, who was one of its co-founders, is now the head of the mobile engineering office in New York. I mean, it was a great team to put there, and I can see other engineers wanting to work with that team. Um, and now they have a base. They, you know, Marissa said that job applications are up. Um, there's just definitely more interest there. So, so which is to say that she's done a really good job of doing the first part, which is improving the company culture and um, you know getting really great talent. Um, products, there's obviously still a lot of products to work on. Um, specifically, I think she really needs to improve not just you know Yahoo's consumer products, but also the advertising products. They're just not. I mean, it's a display business. It's not nearly as sophisticated as what Google or or Facebook is offering now. And so, I mean, we've, we've talked about the, the job satisfaction part. Um, Seth, you, you had written the piece on kind of the, the feedback there. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. I mean, I think there's no doubt that one of the biggest accomplishments that she's had so far has been in boosting morale at the company through some of the things that Lauren alluded to. Um, I think she said she's instituted something like 600 employee-focused initiatives. Um, you know, a lot of those are not small things. Increasing paid time for, for new parents is a big deal for employees of the company. And it's clear that she's really bringing um, the company culture more in line with what's traditionally uh, available in other Silicon Valley companies. Um, so, you know, Glassdoor found doing a survey that, uh, you know, employee satisfaction is at a five-year high. Um, her, Marissa Mayer's approval rating is pretty much as high or higher than most of her predecessors. Um, so those are all positive signs. You know, I, I think Lauren and I disagree a little bit about um, how to evaluate her tenure so far. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of what she might get credit for, she doesn't quite deserve just yet. Um, that's not to say she's not on the right track, but most people are pointing to this very significant increase in the stock, um, a 70% gain, and most of that is really due to uh, factors sort of beyond her. It, it's due to Yahoo's significant stake in Alibaba, which is expected to, uh, it's a Chinese e-commerce company, it's expected to go public in the next you know, near future. Um, Yahoo owns 24% of it. Um, there's a lot of money that's expected to come to them as a result of that. And I think investors are looking at that. Um, you know, I, I think the best thing I would say about her, and maybe Lauren would agree, is I think she's changed the perception of the company now. It, it feels like they're trying to manage their ascent rather than their decline. Um, and I think that's how it felt to me for a while, that Yahoo was very much just kind of stuck in this flow of not rapid decline. Whoever was in charge was just kind of overwhelmed by it. And she seems like there's a vision there that maybe there hadn't been for a while. And let's talk about some of the acquisitions. Obviously, the, um, the, the most talked about, most publicized uh, was the acquisition of Tumblr. <laughs> Christine, I do want to pass this to you, because I know you have written a little bit about this. Um, so you know, kind of what, what was the, the um, feedback on that, and, and where do you think that Yahoo's going to go with this? Yeah, so I mean, I think the Tumblr feedback was mixed by a lot of people. I mean, obviously, some of the users had concerns, and uh, 
they're not wrong to have concerns. You know, any time a community-oriented site is bought by another company, you risk losing some of the culture. Uh, but I think that it was one of those moves that proved, um, you know, kind of what, what Seth was was saying before, and, and what she's kind of been criticized for is, is or you know, buying her way into to, to relevance. But at the same time, I think that's really smart. You know, I mean, Tumblr is one of the largest uh, page driving you know sites out there. I mean, the, the amount of, of page views that come from Tumblr is uh, really, really substantial. And what I think is, is interesting about it is that it kind of aligns to what the overall vision for Yahoo really is. And, and when uh, uh, Marissa joined, it seemed unclear. You know, they half Scott Thompson was saying we're a media company, and and then the the guy that took over said, okay, we kind of are too. And and we're, we're not uh, an ad, we're not a search company, we're not an ad company, we're not a tech company, we're a media company. And and I think you know, uh, Mayor kind of started saying, oh, we're a tech company, not wanting to really define what they are. But I think that what's actually been really interesting is is what we've really seen in the last year, especially with Tumblr, is that fundamentally they're an advertising company, which is is what Google is too, for that matter. And and that's something that she has a lot of experience with. And I think that the the big thing to take away from the Tumblr acquisition is that a if they can keep the culture in check, which is absolutely instrumental, because if you don't, then all that traffic goes away and, and you wind up with a Bebo or a MySpace or, or, or something else. Uh, but if you can keep that culture in check, then you have the opportunity from an advertising perspective to now control potentially a whole bunch of eyeballs and to have very, very valuable real estate that puts you ahead of your other, you know, the other people in display advertisement. Because when you look at where people spend time, the average amount of time on site on Tumblr versus Facebook, a lot of times is, is, is in um, Tumblr's favor. And, um, you know, it might not have the broadest appeal but at, at, as Facebook does, but it's a really interesting place where people spend a lot of time and there's a lot of potential there um, to make money. And, and that hadn't been monetized at all, really. Um, you know, the, the Tumblr before the acquisition was just starting to kind of make the moves in that direction, and, and I know Lauren knows that better than than anyone. Um, but it was uh, so. I think that that was kind of a move saying, you know, what, we're serious about this, and, and we're ready not only to compete with, we're ready to compete with AOL and Facebook and and uh, Google, uh, and and to use the money that we have from Alibaba to make that happen. And I guess one of the other things is is overall is this cool factor now that you know, and, and the fact that Yahoo has been in the spotlight. It seems like a lot more than it has been in the past, and and sometimes for for uh, very good things. So I mean, would you say overall it, it's been very positive um, for Yahoo being in the news this past year? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I mean, I think that Yahoo is kind of like Microsoft in that it still does uh, ultimately it has a major person. Uh, there, there's. A perception problem, um, and it's going to struggle with cool, just as AOL does. But I think that Yahoo buying Tumblr is, is a big uh, improvement. I think the fact that they've shown that they're listening, doing things like redoing how Flickr works, buying some of these startups, um, having cool people work there, uh, it has certainly done a lot to make it seem like a better brand. Unfortunately, I think that it's going to be a while, and they're probably going to have to to launch um, a few things directly under the new Yahoo banner, and not just acquire things that can gain traction for them really to get over the the idea and. The perception that they're not cool because unfortunately, you know, we saw this with the Tumblr thing, right? And people were saying, oh, well, look at what they did to GeoCities, look at what they did to Flickr, look at what they did to, you know, all these companies. And that's true, but what you have to understand is that was like seven CEOs ago. And <laughs> And that's actually, I'm not even joking, I genuinely, like, yeah, <laughs> like, like the GeoCities thing was seven CEOs ago, which just shows kind of the state of the company. But uh, when you have that uh, is a complete switch in culture, but you still have the same brand, it's going to take more for people to say, okay, we trust them again. Um, you know, AOL has had that problem. I think Yahoo is doing a better job of reinventing themselves, but I think that the only thing that's probably going to really get people over the, the negative perception stuff and, and no one uses Yahoo and whatnot is for them to launch a product internally uh, directly from like the mayor regime that is able to live um, in and of itself and, and it isn't just something that they bought from someone else. Yeah, I would actually, I would argue just quickly that I think the Tumblr acquisition may be the only one I can think of that kind of uh, speaks to average consumer perception of the company, but the rest of them I think really, if anything, it just telegraphs a perception to people who might work at the company. I mean, they're basically buying up a ton of small startups, uh, yeah. many, many of which people have argued were failed startups. And yes. I think that's become a criticism of, of her tenure as well, but um, if anything, she's projecting that, hey, we are a place that will kind of absorb talented engineers, even if the product itself is a failure. 
Um, so I don't know if that really helps the cool factor, per se. Um, no, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that Tumblr is probably the only one that most regular people yeah. kind of follow. But, but I mean, that's a big deal. It's a big, but it, it, but big it's a huge deal. deal. Yeah. And I think that that's the sort of thing where people then all of a sudden go, well, maybe I should check them out again. You know, right. but, but even doing things like releasing the Yahoo Weather app and, and you know, kind of trying to restart Flickr um, after, you know, letting it sit dormant for so long, I mean, that's... Flickr arguably never really got mainstream um, adoption. You know, if Facebook was the one who owned that. But um, but seeing kind of where they where they go from there, I think that certainly they're more relevant to people now rather than being oh, is that company still around? You know, but 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 I think that to your point, Seth, I think most people probably still in some way, or shape, or form think that Yahoo has its own search engine. You know, which just <laughs> isn't true. Well, I mean, Marissa is a very cool CEO. I mean, look at the attention she got with changing Yahoo's work-from-home policy. I think if Carol Barth had done that, that would have not been in the, the center of the national conversation the way that that was. Um, and you see Yahoo being more closely reported um, than they were in years past. And I would say much more closely reported than Microsoft. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, that, I think you guys make a good point, which is that, like, the products still aren't cool. Like, you, we would never go to yahoo.com. Yahoo News no. is not a good consumer experience. Yes, the weather app is lovely, but like I haven't seen, you know, and they've released some updates to the, to the homepage and to, um, and to the news site, but I just don't feel like it's on the same level. So I, I'm hoping that what they do with their other products when they, you know, finally revamp Yahoo Finance and, and a few others, that they're, they're actually brought up to that same level, that they're actually winning Apple Design Awards and et cetera. I would actually, I would argue Flickr is probably the biggest accomplishment that they've had in my mind. It actually got me to start using Yahoo a little bit again. Just one, the amount of space they give you, and two, the experience is great. And three, it was a brand, even if it wasn't the biggest brand. Um, yeah. I, I do actually believe they could probably build around that a bit more going forward. No, I think you're right. I think I think you're absolutely right. And I think that you know the important thing to remember what, what's and and this is always this is AOL's Achilles heel too, right? It is. You know, we talk. No, you and I, we wouldn't go to Yahoo News. I mean, the people who are watching this probably aren't people who go to Yahoo News, but they get hundreds of millions of, of, of page views. You know, they're they're one of those top destinations. So, I, I think that's something that, that she's going to have to balance. And and we saw this with the work from home um, uh, conversation, which I know that, that Ryan will probably have us talk more about. Um, and, and I think you're absolutely right, Lauren. We certainly are talking more about her because it's Marissa Mayer, because she was the Google golden child, and for many years she was the public face of the company before Eric um, Schmidt took over, uh, in particular. She was very, very visible um, in that company, and, and certainly before, before you know, Larry then uh, took the reins again. But she, um, you know, I think has to have that balance between what's cool for young consumers without alienating the core group of people that, frankly, at this point are the ones who are um, allowing them to, you know, still kind of generate money, so to speak. So it's like you, you, can't, you can't do what uh, what Ron Johnson did at JCPenney, which is have all these great changes but make them before the new stuff is in place. It's like I think that at some point she's probably going to, they could probably completely kind of get rid of the, the legacy audience that still comes to Yahoo for business and for, for email and revamp that whole thing. But mm -hmm. before they do that, I think they've got to be really careful and make sure that they've got the replacement in place and that the replacement revenue, or in this case eyeballs, are there. Um, and, and that you know, they can do without the people that they might potentially lose if they change too much or you know, um, ignore the, the, the group of the audience that, that granted isn't cool but is the people who are ultimately you know, making what money they do make. Great. Well, we're going to move on from uh, some of the pros. And I actually want to point out Rachel Benedict, one of our uh, audience members who's following along. Uh, she added, she has done an amazing job so far. Her experience at Google has rubbed off on the Yahoo employees. So thank you, Rachel, for uh, taking the time to comment. And uh, now going on from the good stuff, we're going to move on to some of the cons and some of the negative things that um, you know we, we've kind of reported over the past year. Um, Seth, I know uh, your, your piece yesterday, in the piece you called it, Don't Call It a Comeback. Um, <laughs> you talked about the, the diminishing uh, display ad revenue. So I, I want to pass this along to you first to kind of get your thoughts there. Sure. I, I think, um, you know, it's not that it's necessarily gotten worse in the past year for display ad revenue, but, you know, when Lauren talked before about the sprints that she's doing, the, the series of steps, sort of the, the end goal of all of that is eventually that you have more engagement, more users, and that boosts ad revenue. It makes their ad product more, uh, you know, desirable. Um, but the truth is, right now, they've sort of been lapped by Facebook and by Google. Um, and I, I think a lot of what Yahoo has done in the past year is to lay the tracks to improve the mobile experience with the goal that eventually they'll have a better mobile ad product, um, that the mobile ad rates will increase, and then that will help uh, finally give a nice boost to their ad revenue. But really, for the last year, you know, their revenue has been pretty stagnant. 
we're expecting as much later today when, when they report earnings. Um, and, and so we haven't really seen that boost yet, which is why, again, I say that the stock has been on the rise, but it's not really because of any noticeable turnaround in, in Yahoo's core business. It's because of Alibaba and perhaps a little bit because of some optimism for her long-term vision. But, you know, as Lauren rightly points out, like, that, that hasn't you know, come to fruition yet. And it remains to be seen whether it comes to fruition this year, next year. Great. Um, Lauren, I know you, you've had glowing remarks uh, about Marissa Mayer. What would you say maybe have been some of the cons over the past year, if, if you have any? No, I mean, as Seth really talked about them. Um, we don't, the, the business still isn't there, right? And then we still aren't seeing really great advertising products for them. And, you know, if they are going to remain an advertising business, which was, is what it sounds like, then, um, yeah, then they need to start improving their display numbers and they need to develop better and new ad products. Um, we saw one, two new um, ad formats introduced this year, and they were just sort of in-stream ads um, for the web and for mobile, and they weren't, they weren't particularly exciting. They weren't well targeted. I don't think that they will eat into uh, Facebook's advertising budget. So, um, I, yeah, I, I definitely think that's an area that uh, Yahoo needs to concentrate on. Um, and, you know, beyond that, we still... I mean, just so much more needs to be seen. I don't really have any specific complaints. I don't think that she's done anything wrong at this point. I think she's communicated a clear vision. She's, she's begun to execute on it, and this year will really be about seeing whether she can improve those products. I don't even know if the ad picture is going to come together this year. Um, it still may be in the third year, but even then, I still think she's on track. Great. Um, Christina, I wanna, uh, you alluded to this earlier uh, regarding the, the whole controversy and all the news earlier uh, this year regarding working from home and the working from home policies. Um, you know, and a lot of developers, especially um, not even employees of Yahoo, definitely um, had a lot to say about that. So, um, you know, wh what were your thoughts on this and, and where do you think Yahoo has moved forward uh, from this issue? Well, I mean, I think that's actually the really interesting thing is, you know, uh, Seth was mentioning earlier that, you know, the satisfaction rates higher than they've been for other CEOs and then employees are showing, you know, five-year job highs for their satisfaction. So, you know, I think that kind of proves that even making these sorts of changes, um, employees are happier. Um, I think that it's, what's interesting is a lot of the people who made the, who were most vocal about the work from home issue and about the fact that people are no longer allowed to work from home are people that don't work at Yahoo. And so I think it's important to, to, to view it in the context of this is what's happening with this company and not necessarily an indictment of a philosophy of whether or not you know, remote working can work or, or people should all be in one place. Um, because I certainly think that pe many people have made many solid arguments that remote working is definitely possible. But I think that, you know, um, especially as what Lauren was saying earlier, you know, it, turning this company around is a big effort. And, and if it might even take another year for the ad picture to come together, um, you know, as CEO, she's obviously saying, for this to happen, we need to have everybody in the building, and we need to have everybody to be able to communicate. Um, and and I think it was probably also about maybe just you know get ridding, getting rid of of a, you know a redundancy um, in, in a way that maybe was just easier to do. I, I don't really know, but I think that it it raised a bunch of interesting issues. But I don't know how many of the comment how how much of the commentary about it was really relevant to people. Um, who actually work at Yahoo? Because people that I've talked to at Yahoo, most of them seemed okay with it. Uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 once it was, uh, they were guaranteed that hey, if I have to be at home, you know, for the cable guy or the kid gets sick or whatever, I can still remote log in, and and that's okay, that's fine. But you know, a lot of people had kind of taken advantage of what was happening um, with the lack of management, frankly. You know, the fact they'd had four CEOs in a year uh, to to not do a lot of things, and so you know, I think that that's an important thing to keep in context, but. Uh, she certainly did get a lot of heat for that. Uh, I do wonder, you know, if, as, as Lauren said earlier, if she would have had that much criticism if it had been Carol Bartz, or frankly, if it had been, you know, um, not uh, a woman who made that decision. I think those are all interesting, interesting things to think about. Yeah, Lauren, I'd love to, to get your thoughts. Do you think this was a, a bigger issue? Um, this was made a bigger issue than it really should have been? Sorry, the work from home issue? Yes. Um, I mean, I think it's it's something that had been bubbling up at multiple organizations. I think Yahoo just really crystallized um, sort of the effort. On the one hand, we have we're trying to make uh, work and home more equitable between men and women. Um, and when you ask people to come into the office every day, that's really hard for obviously for young parents. Um, and you know, the reality is that there are a lot of um, you know, both parents are now working. Um, and so when you have one parent that's able to stay home, obviously that makes it a lot easier. And also it's so much easier now to remote work just because we have all of those tools. Um, I think there's also a frustration there that, you know, it, 
you shouldn't have to, you know, put sort of put in face time at the office. You should have concrete goals and be able to deliver on those goals. And your if your employees are efficient and they're getting their work done and they're meeting those goals. So, you know, she talked sort of about, you know, wanting, wanting collaboration and everything else. But there was almost a, a sense that maybe her message wasn't quite authentic. And maybe it really was about those employees that sort of needed to be watched. So um, I don't think it was... I think it was probably made a bigger deal than it needed to be for Yahoo. I just, but I think it was one of those things that was percolating, and it finally, you know, presented an opportunity for it to become part of the national conversation. Great. Um, if there, if there are no other thoughts about uh, the cons, I, I do want to move on to uh, a little bit of user feedback and some of the questions that um, we've got from our audience. Um, so this is from uh, Chris Gregoire. Uh, Chris, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. Um, what he said is, the problem with Yahoo is that they offer nothing better than their competition. What's left? How do you bring new people in? So do you, number one, agree with what Chris is saying? And number two, um, how do you separate yourself from your competition? Open to anyone. <laughs> I mean, I know why he says that. I, I feel a similar way at times. I think you can flip that on its head, though. Yahoo already kind of has products available. Um, in every one of the most, I would say, essential you know, app and web tech categories that you would want from the company, they arguably compete against Facebook and Google in every major category, minus having a social network, per se. Um, and I think what, they, what they're doing now, what they probably will do in the year to come, is just upgrading those products to really compete head to head and uh, hopefully have new features. I mean, I think when you look at a product like Yahoo Weather, maybe Weather is not you know, the most important app in the world, but it's one that you probably use every day, and I think it has a distinct feel to it now. You know, it was highlighted by Apple this year at WWDC. Um, same with Flickr. I, I think you know you could argue Google Plus has similar features, but by distinguishing it by giving it more storage space, by having a really nice interface, if they can keep doing that for all their products, they don't have to have something that no one else has. But if the features on what they do have are as good or better, they can really hold on to an audience. So. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, and I think that. You know, well, it's true they don't really have anything that differentiates themselves. I mean, I think that also gives them an opportunity, right? Because historically, Yahoo has actually had um, a lot of really cool products, and, and one of the the unfortunate things is that um, for many years there were a lot of really great web developers who worked at Yahoo, who were developing amazing web technologies, who never really got any credit. You know, who were doing amazing stuff with JavaScript, who were doing amazing stuff with with mobile design, and um, that stuff never really got to come to the forefront because the the company infrastructure was so mismanaged and bloated and, and all over the place. So I think that if you're taking these talented companies you know, they're acquiring and you're able to maybe put them to work and, and creating new products, then that's an opportunity. You know, maybe yeah, Yahoo could create something that's really unique. I mean, I think a weather app is a nice start. I, I think that they're probably a little bit hampered by the fact that most of the users who use you know, um, at the iPhone use the, the weather app and uh, it's built in, and it's powered by Yahoo's data. So there's not a huge you know, um, it's not as if the data you're going to get is going to be any better or any different. Uh, but I think that uh, they definitely have an opportunity, especially with mobile, to um, iterate faster, certainly than Facebook is. You know, Facebook, other than Instagram, has really struggled to kind of get itself into mobile and to do a lot of mobile-first products. And, and they've, Yahoo has acquired a lot of mobile-first companies, you know? And, and that's, I think, uh, represents a, an opportunity. But, uh, but if you're just looking at them right now, why would I switch to Yahoo over something else? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think that's a valid criticism. And, and that's something they're going to have to answer. They're going to have to create a really cool product that will say no one else has this, or if they do have it, it, it doesn't do all the things that we can do, and that doesn't tie in all of these different technologies that we've acquired together. Yeah, I, I agree with Christina. I mean, the, there's a huge opportunity in mobile because so many of the biggest web players still don't have very good mobile experiences, whether that's like a retailer, or a newspaper, or a magazine. They're Universe. They're not great. There's a lot of opportunity to improve. Um, and, you know, the Yahoo. That's clearly where Yahoo's focusing its engineering talent. So um, I think that I think they do have a big opportunity to become sort of first in class and even like the first people to create great products on mobile. Um, the second thing I'd point out is that I don't. I mean, personally, the user. I still don't think there's a better. Uh, I mean, Yahoo Finance is still so dominant. Yes. Google Finance never became better. I mean, arguably, like Bloomberg has created a really cool uh, tablet, uh, mobile, and web experience, but it, it doesn't aggregate the same way. So, and we, you know, I've heard that Yahoo, you know, Yahoo Finance is planning sort of a big mobile push, and um, I think that's a that's a really big opportunity for them. 
Great. No, I think that's a great point because most people, most people forget about Yahoo Finance, and you're absolutely right. That's the for the free services. If you're not on a terminal, that's absolutely the best. They get the real time data just like Google does, but the news that they get is so much better and it's so much more current, and they, they totally dominate. Great point. Great, uh, and thank you again, Chris, for that for that question. Um, this is from Jesse Luthen, um, and his question is: How big a role will the Tumblr acquisition play into Yahoo's long term success? So obviously we've talked about you know the cool factor um, and the the kind of audience that um, Tumblr brings to Yahoo. So I mean, what do you guys think about um, you know Tumblr or Yahoo's long term success with Tumblr? I've thought a lot about this. Um, I mean, t Tumblr's big problem was that they could not figure out the ad business. Um, they it was to the point. I mean, by the time that Yahoo acquired them, the only way you could buy um, ads from Tumblr was using a credit card. Um, so, you know, I, was I talked to a lot of marketers who are like, yeah, I have to charge it to my personal account and then expense it, which just completely messes everything up. So it's just clearly like a they just really didn't understand what advertisers wanted. And the ad products they rolled out, users hated. Um, <laughs> And like publicly protested against just because, and it's not to say that maybe the Tumblr community is so advertising adverse. I think they want to see Tumblr succeed, and I think they're realistic about the economies of the web. Um, it's really that the, the products are extremely obnoxious and poorly priced. So Yahoo, I think, can really can really help Tumblr figure out that part of the puzzle. The question is, are, is Yahoo going to have interesting or innovative ad products. You know, I really think this would have been such an interesting buy for Facebook, which really could have taken advantage of so much more inventory and ha has such sophisticated targeting and has such sophisticated retargeting. Uh, if you can imagine this vast network that they would have across Facebook and Instagram and Tumblr, that didn't happen. Um, the question, I guess, is, is whether, you know, is, is Yahoo just going to turn, you know, take Tumblr's massive inventory and put display ads on it, or are they going to develop something much more sophisticated to run sort of across all of its properties? Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, honestly, like, how cool would it be if they were able to do an AdSense for, for Tumblr? You know what I mean? Like, like come up with something that, that had, you know, when, when Google came up with AdSense, you know, it, it revolutionized a lot of things. And, and even though their display business is obviously much, much bigger than that, you know, it, it allowed people to do that. But if, if Yahoo would be able to use their engineering talent to find a way to, you know, let users opt in to having Yahoo ads on their Tumblr pages, and then you could target based on keywords and content what types of ads appear you know, on those pages. Um, I mean, that could that could have a lot of potential, and and they certainly then have a, a huge swath of, of, of content and, and of eyeballs um, that that is to their advantage. But I think Lauren's absolutely right. I think that you know Tumblr didn't understand and didn't really want to understand. That wasn't really their goal. Their goal wasn't to build an advertising company. Their goal was to build you know a content community, um, and and that's what their focuses were. Uh, but um, that put them at a disadvantage when working with large brands and it made it hard for them to get embraced in a big way. So I, the challenge I think will be, you know, managing to create those new products and, and put in that new stuff but still keeping, you know, the community um, intact and, and not becoming, you know, really puritanical and, and not uh, making too many changes, you know, to the front user interface, um, and, and not infusing Yahoo stoppers into Tumblr. I mean, I think that the worst thing that could happen would be if we started seeing, you know, like Tumblr, like like Yahoo sending like their own execs or people from other teams, like, oh, you're going to join the Tumblr team now. You know, like let Tumblr still hire like independently and let them still run their own engineering. Um, and if, if you want to integrate on the ad side, fine, but let them still do what they do. And and that's because if you don't. Um, I mean, we've seen how fickle social um, networks are, and, and, and that's fundamentally what, what Tumblr is. Uh, you know, people will move on to something else, and, and they will build new communities around other stuff. Great. Um, so, Jesse, thank you so much for that question. And I, I want to get to one more before I, I ask you all um, one final question. Uh, this is from Phil Nolan. Um, and he says, I would just assume her first year would be about getting, their, getting her ducks in a row before seeing major change. Why is there so much fasc fascination around her to succeed so quickly? So, good question, Phil, and uh, I'll open it up to all of you. you know, well, I think I mean, sorry, go ahead, Seth. Uh, I, just, I, I'm not, I don't have a great answer. I think there's a really compelling narrative there. I mean, Yahoo is this long, languishing company that has tried and tried again and, and then failed and failed again. And Marissa Mayer, for a lot of people, I think actually is a, a, a new face. I think if you follow the tech industry very closely, you've probably known her for a while, but you know, here comes this woman who seems, you know, incredibly competent, has a, a real, like, shine to her, 
um, you know, always seems to dazzle in, in public appearances, you know, brings kind of, I think, a very modern touch from tech companies to Yahoo. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, even the work from home controversy is a good example of the double-edged sword for this. You know, everything she does comes with a certain amount of star power, um, and we're just fascinated about whether she's going to succeed wildly or fail wildly. For some reason, I don't think anyone has a narrative in there that nothing happens at the end of the day. I think it's one or the other. <laughs> um, so... Lauren? I mean, no, I mean, I'll just add that I think people are, you know, the media and uh, consumers are just very impatient in general and want to see change. And I think there's sometimes an unrealistic expectation for big companies like AOL and like Yahoo um, to be turned around in the course of the year, which just simply isn't realistic. I mean, we've seen, or, you know, we have HP now. Mm -hmm. I've seen how long Tim Armstrong has been working with AOL, and you know people sort of wrote him off when he he had he definitely struggled his first year. You know he, he struggled to retain some of the talent he brought from Google, and you know we didn't see really big changes at AOL. Um, I won't get too far into what I think about what's going on at AOL right now, <laughs> but um, yeah. So this, I think I think people are are just anxious. They want to know is she actually going to be able to turn this around, or is you know is she just making a lot of changes? But it's a lot of error, and ultimately it's not going to accomplish anything. Um, but I don't think I don't think it, she's necessarily a big exception. Yes, she's more famous, so people are are watching her. But you know we've seen this almost with every sort of big turnaround story. Great. Thank you, Phil, uh, for that great question. And I do want to uh, uh, open this last question to all of you and get your thoughts. Um, Seth and Lauren, you both have, have written um, about this. But, you know, this is one year for Marissa Mayer at Yahoo. So where does um, Mayer and Yahoo go from here? Seth, I'll start with you. You know, I think a lot of it's going to be uh, doubling down on mobile and, and trying to make a, the most of the investments that they've already uh, put in this past year. You know, we've already seen, I cited a stat from Tom for in the piece I wrote this week, um, showing that there has been strong uh, growth in their smartphone audience. In fact, they've been growing at a faster pace than Google and almost as fast as Facebook. They still obviously have a lot of ground to catch up on, but um, you know, I think we're going to see them continue to update their existing mobile products. I hope they'll introduce new mobile products. Um, they'll probably continue acquiring. I'm not sure if at as fast a clip as they have been with the goal, ultimately, of, of boosting the desirability of, of the ad products that we're assuming they're going to introduce on mobile. Um, so I would assume that'll be the big focus of the next few months. Lauren? Yeah, I mean, I def you know, Yahoo still has a lot of cash, and they're moving into those new New York headquarters, and I know they've got about 200 extra seats to fill, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more, if you know, sales staff and also more acquisitions in line. Um, the question is whether they're going to keep, you know, snapping up mobile engineers who are building these cool consumer-facing products, if we're ever going to see them start to maybe invest in some ad tech. That'll be something um, I'm very curious about, but that's something that Marissa hasn't, you know, expressed any sort of interest in. Um, yeah, I mean, beyond that, can we expect to see this year like a reverse in this play advertising business? I'm not, I'm not expecting it. And Christina? Yeah, no, I mean, I think basically, you know, what they said, I, I, I don't really expect the advertising, you know, stuff to, to reverse itself. But uh, I think from a, a consumer standpoint and a visual, you know, uh, from like a perception standpoint, yeah, definitely what they need to do is continue pushing out new apps and updating apps and, and creating new experiences, especially on mobile, because I think that the, the faster that they do that and, and the better that they do that, um, the, the more, um, the better job they can do of erasing the past uh, mistakes that Yahoo's made. I mean, no, but, but I think it's interesting too, I think that it really took kind of the, the Tumblr acquisition for me to kind of look at, at Yahoo and go, you know, I think that she, I, th I think that her strategy is starting to become more clear, and that's really important. And I think that maybe, you know, a year in, she'll have like a clear goal of, okay, this is what the company is, and now we can go and and start executing on those goals um, and and making things happen in order um, to build out what type of company it is. Because, like I said before, you know. What is Yahoo used to be a really common refrain, and uh, going into the next year, you know, I think that hopefully that should be less of a question, and it should be more about executing and, and making the decisions um, to enhance, you know, uh, the core strengths of the company rather than figuring out what type of company are we. Excellent. Well, I think regardless of what the next moves are, they will be interesting, and we will all be following along closely. I'm sure. Um, so once again, thank you all for taking the time. I uh, want to thank Seth. Lauren and Christina for uh, taking the time to, to join in as well. And uh, for all of you who took the time to not only watch but to comment, we really do appreciate it. You can, if you did jump in late, you can check this out either on our Google Plus page or on our Mashable YouTube account.
and subscribe while you're there. Um, and we'll have a lot more uh, Marissa Mayer content coming on. I can guarantee you that. So once again, uh, thank you all, and um, we'll see you all soon.